Wood Turning with Tim is made possible by these fine sponsors. The American Beauty Tim uses was made by Robust Tools. All our lays have a seven year warranty. Our tool wrists feature a hardened rod on top. Lots of sizes to fit your lathe. Robust. Because the making matters. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. As a wood turner, you know, when the holiday seasons are upon you, it's too late to make your holiday stuff. So we're starting a little bit early. And one thing you also know as a wood turner, what am I gonna make this year? You know, we've done it. We've made Christmas ornaments. We made icicles. We made tree toppers. We made a snowman. We have made a snow woman. Uh, we made a holiday bell. We've made a bunch of stuff. So I'm thinking, what can we do that's a little bit different outside of the box? Let's make something that doesn't hang. Let's make something that sits. So this time we're making an acrylic globe that is stained glass look. Isn't that cool? That's pretty neat. It's got uh, leading on here. It's got some, uh, it's kind of like this paint stuff. It's coloring that makes stained glass look. And there's acrylic underneath here that we layered. And then I have a base down here that I turned out of wood, which holds and houses all the wiring and stuff like that. And inside we have these really cool fairy lights right there. Uh, I got a 33 foot length one. You might not want to get something that long because it takes a while to cram that in there. And <laughs> it looked uncomfortable when I did it. Uh, this also comes with different modes, but I'll show you those later. Um, and what we're doing is, <clears throat> this is the efficient or uh, uh, poor man's way of doing acrylic. You can actually build or make your own acrylic, but it requires buying a pressure pot, some chemicals, things like that. Not difficult, but there's an investment. And if you don't want to invest in that much money, the way I'm doing it here is the easiest way you can do it. Uh, you can go out, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I swallowed some wood without even turning it. Um, and go to your hardware store, things like that, and you can buy sheets of acrylic. This is a half inch thick, and it's a piece that I've had laying around the house quite a while. We've made a couple of little projects out of it on the show, but we're gonna make a big one today. And this stuff is a little bit different in, in the way it handles from the acrylic that you can make. The acrylic you can make, you make is a little bit softer, a little bit more friendly. This has a little more ability or tendency to shatter. So we have to take some special steps to make sure that we're safe when we're using this. Now, what I did was since that's a half inch thick, I decided I'm gonna make a five inch globe. So I, I drew a circle here and I actually made it a little bit larger because I'm gonna waste some of this as I turn it down. So I, there's my center, I drew a line across. So five and an eighth is my first disc, five inches my second disc. And I'm measuring out to this corner out here, not this one. And so four and three quarters, four and an eighth and three and one eighth. And so, the idea of doing this was is that it held me separate out and see how many pieces I was going to need. So it's easy math because I wanted to make it easy. Five inches, half inch, that means I need 10 pieces. So I'm going to need two of each to make this. Well, you can't use a compass on acrylic because the pencil doesn't mark across and this keeps sliding across the acrylic. So I went ahead and just went to some cardboard and made some templates like so. So you can see over here, I've already drawn a couple of them on here. And all I'm gonna do now is continue to lay out the different discs, and then we're going to the bandsaw ah, to cut these out. Now with acrylic, you have a lot of issues, and most of them deal with heat and speed of your cut and the blade that you're using. So I had a bigger blade on here and found out it was way too aggressive and it chipped the acrylic a lot. So I went to a quarter inch blade, and I've got everything down here so it's nice and safe so my fingers hopefully won't go under there. <laughs> we'll turn this on and we're going to work on this first disc right here. And you'll, you'll notice that this is a, a mix of cutting and melting. Because you can see, as a, I don't want to get my finger any closer, but you can see how the blade is making a white mark there. 
it's actually cutting and melting at the same time. And this little quarter inch blade just slides through here like butter. So I'm gonna follow my edge roughly on this first five and eighth inch piece and just take off the Sharpie line because the Sharpie's outside of what my template was. So if I lose that line, I'm doing good. Get that cleared off a bit. And you just wanna go slow. If you go fast, that's when it starts to chip. It's really hard to hear with this blade, but every now and then you hear a chick, 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 and that's when you're going a little too fast. Let's see if I, I'll show you. Hear that little popping? That little popping sound is little bits of little chips happening. So let's set that down. I don't know if you can see it, but the edges have a little chip on them if you go too quick in this area here. So it can get worse than that. You can see something right there possibly. It gets worse than that with the bigger the blade, the faster you move. So now it's just a simple cut out the shape. And once I've cut out some of these shapes, we're gonna run over to the band, to the bandsaw, to the drill press, because we actually have to take the center out of some of these pieces so we have a place to put the lights. Now I'm doing a little bit of marking out or laying out. Uh, if you notice, all my little discs have a hole in the center. And the reason is, is I need to be able to find the center on the disc when I get ready to cut it on the drill press. Now, since I went ahead and, and labeled certain ones with their sizes, because sometimes it can get a little confusing between the five and an eighth and the five inch, and you don't want to mess that up when you're building your stack. So I labeled them, but I labeled them in the center because I'm losing the center. One little issue I had, which I always figure these things out afterwards is uh, I'm using a gold pin by the way because that way I can see gold over the black a little bit better is that the lettering on here when you put the glue on here to glue things together the lettering runs well there's a couple pieces in here these are the uh, three and an eighth inch and then I didn't label them this time because I got smarter this is the uh, four and an eighth inch I put them together and there's no hole in them so the black melts and it colors the plastic so that's not too cool uh, so that it's actually covered up in there you really can't see that it's in there thank goodness but if you did this and just left it clear or opaque you'd see all that the other thing is i think just a little wipe of alcohol will take that away so you can be a little cleaner and neater in the process but anyway i get the i'll get the holes marked on all those but i'll show you how i drill the holes in these you need enough area to put the lights in and if you look at this one here I've got two types of holes. You can see I've got a bigger hole in the center. That's two and three quarters, I think. And then I have uh, one inch right here. Uh, the, this is where I'm gonna thread through the little fairy lights, but then they, they expand into here. You can see my finger and there's a lot of room in there for them to go in. So that's what we're wanting to cut. You're seeing bubbles and stuff like that. Don't worry about that. That doesn't affect the project at all. If you're after perfection, you're not gonna see it here. That's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I have a waste piece of wood mounted on the drill press and then I have the blank clamped down and you can see I have a hole saw up here. I did a lot of trial and error trying to figure out how to drill this hole. The first thing I thought was, you know, I might have to use a scroll saw. So I drilled a little hole in there, got my scroll saw out and tried to cut it. Well, it took so doggone long to cut the hole. It was about 10 minutes. It just doesn't move through there. It's not powerful enough. Then I thought, well, let's just hog it out with this and I grabbed my old Forstner bit. It worked pretty good until the very end, and as it's going down, there's like this little tiny layer of plastic left underneath, and all of a sudden, someone whizzed by my ear, and part of that plastic shattered out and went flying. So that's not a good idea, because you think about it, you're removing a lot of material with this big hog. When you use a hole saw, we're just removing the outer edge. Now, it's really cool. Let's see if I've got this set up right. I want to make sure to hit my clamps, and I'm centered on there. So we're gonna turn this on. Now, the technique to doing this is you wanna go slow because again, it's heat, heat melts the acrylic. And so right now that little bit is going in. You can see it through the holes in the saw and it's just doing the center hole. Now it's gonna make a little contact here. We'll make sure everything's locked down good. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna pulse this because I don't wanna build up a lot of heat. The first time I did this, I just wham, went all the way through. Well, what that did is it heated that plug up so much that when it went inside the hole saw, it melted to the hole saw. 
I've got a technique for showing you in case that happens on how to get that out, but we'll show you the technique on how to avoid it right now. So it pulse, and I don't know if you can actually see, there's a little tiny shadow line. You can see a shadow line appearing at the bottom. As that goes in, as that shadow line gets narrower, I know I'm getting closer to going through. So I'm almost there, so I'm gonna just wait for a second here. I'm gonna let that cool off because these shavings aren't hot. These are signs of being melted. And so when you get those in there, that's what adheres to the inside. So we'll just give it a breather here. And once this gets going, I'm gonna move a little quickly to show you what happens next. Okay, the blank uh, center came out. So over here, you can see the center is not in there now. The center is up in here. So you take a screwdriver, and hear that cracking sound, that means I got to it in time. And you can see it showing at the bottom. So I just put this in here again. That's what these are for, is for prying. And I'm leaving it on the uh, drill press because it's another set of hands to help me hold this here. So you can go like this, and then there's a point to where you get all kind of out enough. You can come down here and carefully unscrew it. We might not be to that point yet. <laughs> Let me do one more here. This is not that hot right now because I took my time pulsing that in there. So, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera, Brian. There we go. So, here we go. It's trying to do this where you can see and I don't get cut. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is just unthreading off that drill bit in there. And so you have this little blank. Save these suckers, by the way, because you can glue this together and make a neat little round ornament later out of it. But let me show you the technique. I'll get one stuck in here and show you how to get it out. You gotta love the internet. When I did my first one, it welded in there so tightly it was stuck and I thought this project's never gonna go anywhere. Oh well, I just uh, Googled Forstner uh, or hole saw stuck blank and learned this trick. Just drill a hole going forward <laughs> through the blank. Really speedy process, isn't it? That is one tough piece of acrylic. <laughs> it's gonna go through. Like I said, it's a simple solution. There we go. I gotta do a second hole, so hang with me. There it goes. <laughs> I don't want to go through my leg. I guess I can't because I got metal in the way here. Yeah. But this is a really slick solution. Uh, several people had it posted on their YouTube site, so I thought, okay, I'll borrow that idea. So I'm going to take out this bit. I'm actually going to put in a screwdriver bit because take a couple of wood screws that are longer than your hole saw, right? And so put that in there. I'm going to thread it in and let it bottom out. Oh, oh, oh no, don't line it up with a hole in the back. <laughs> Let me drill another hole and I'll show you how this works. <laughs> okay, I drilled a few more holes in here trying to not hit other holes. Finally got it to where I want it. This is really easy if you pay attention. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just gonna slowly advance this in. I still have my bit here, so I've gotta do this equally. So just a couple twists like that. And you can see the center blank coming out now. So we just work it back and forth, and that plug comes out. Pretty neat technique. And trust me, I was fighting for like 20, 30 minutes trying to get the blank out. Did not know what to do. Thought we were going to start the whole project all over again, and I could never get that thing out of there. But anyway, that's how you keep going at it. It just pops out slick as all snot. That didn't sound good, but you know what I mean. Okay, there we are stacked up a little bit. You can see I numbered everything on the sides. That's gonna turn away, but that helps me make sure I go from the four to four and three quarters to five and five and eighths, then back down again. You might notice my little three and one eighth inch piece, I have two of them up here. Well, this is actually the bottom because the chuck is going to grab onto this piece and then this piece will be the base and it's gonna disappear into the base that we're gonna turn out of wood. However, you notice I w it's at the bandsaw, at the drill press, and I went ahead and drilled a one inch hole through these three pieces because I, uh, I had to go slow 
and because it's a bigger bit, you gotta take your time, pulsate it and go in, but you can drill through with a bit, a little more work. But the idea is now I can stick cables through here to go down into the hollow into here. So that's how I'm gonna thread through the lighting to put this together. Now, you can put this together with two different solvents. They make, um, it's a solvent type cement, glue type whatever. <laughs> but anyway, it basically bonds and melts the acrylic together to make the acrylic weld to itself. And it's really easy to use. Um, they make a thicker version. Uh, that will leave kind of a cloudy, opaque look in between the layers, and that's great if you just need strength. I wanted to try to go a little clearer so it wouldn't be so messy, so I'm using the really liquidy stuff, and you've got to have an applicator of some sort for this. So I'm just going to stick this in and suck up some of the liquid. You can see it coming into there, and then I'm just going to take this and tilt it up like so, because now gravity is going to feed this out. So down over here, this is fun, we're simply going to take this, and we're gonna let gravity take it out. You don't want a ton on there because this stuff spreads out like water. So I'm gonna take this, I have a little bit of work time, but you can see the glue just spread all the way out and you can't really see the seam now. So I'm gonna make sure the inside is, is, is as aligned as I can in here just for the aesthetics of it. And I'm just gonna put some light pressure on here. Now this is actually melting the acrylic and it's chemically bonding the two pieces of acrylic together. So they are actually becoming one piece of acrylic. This stuff dries and sets really fast. However, I wouldn't trust it for turning right away the same day. I left it overnight and made this one here. And so I feel a little more secure about turning this one now since it's had like 12 hours or so to completely seal up. 24 to 48 hours it reaches its fullest strength and then to actually get stronger over time. It's a really, really cool process. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and layer these up a little bit and then we're gonna go lathe and we're gonna start turning. Now I've been working very gingerly <laughs> on this for a minute and um, let me show you what we got going. Um, I'm trying to put a tenon in here on the end that's gonna go into a chuck to hold it. When you start turning acrylic like this, it <laughs> got my cheaters on. Uh, when you start turning acrylic like this, I'm going to need those, um, you have to be very, very careful. And I went through a lot of different tools to see what would work. I thought first, well, let's go with carbide. That'll work. No. Carbide will chip the crap out of it. Matter of fact, I used a piece of carbide on this just so I could show you the results. If you use carbide, it's going to chip like this. This looks like a piece of glass that came flying off there. You don't want to use carbide. It's too much straight pressure going into it and, and and you can't control it it pulls it in it chips it breaks unfortunately my thompson lathe tools which i love they also won't cut it because you're taking a blade in there this isn't wood it doesn't give it doesn't catch it shatters you can try a pull cut maybe but it is still really risky and really antsy matter of fact there's a point where i'm looking at this project going this might not be the right thing to do but i kept at it and i found out one thing in trying to do the tenon you want to use a heavy skew and just use the absolute tip of the skew to start making that tenon. And I'm literally taking off a 64th of an inch at a time. And so you take it a little bit at a time. You watch your silhouette like you would on any other turning and sneak in. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and finish making my tenon. Once I have that, then I'll be able to hold in a chuck and I'll start showing you how we round it out. It's better. Okay. Also, one thing, make sure you trail the tool. Have the handle tilted up. Do not go in straight. Now, we are mounted in a chuck, hanging onto the tendon we just cut. I brought up my tailstock for a little bit of support and then this contraption here, I've used this one more time, one time on the show before. It's called the Carter uh, Sphere System. And it's really cool by Carter Products and it helps you make a perfect ball. And so I have this set up to where it's going to cut. I tried this with a flat carbide cutter in here to see if that would work. They, they don't offer one of those. It was too aggressive of a cut. So I'm using this tip up here and it's kind of hard to see. 
but this is a hunter tool tip and it is made by Mike Hunter and it's a piece of carbide that's dished out so it's got a cutting edge. You can see I have this canted at about a 45 degree angle. You don't want to go flat on this, it would be again too aggressive. And my cuts are going to go from this side and go this way to leave the smoothest finish. So what happens here is with these knobs and stuff like here, I loosen this, do this, it advances this point out very, very gradually. Whole idea is you want to sneak up on this a little bit at a time. It's probably going to take me about 15, 20 minutes to get the ball exactly where I want it. But this is the only way I've found that you can turn this without blowing things up. And you can if you go too fast or take too big a cut. So don't do that. So anyway, I'm going to wear a face mask through this entire process. Brian has his bulletproof vest and riot shield on, so he hopefully he'll be okay too. So into the mall we go here. I'm going to turn this on. I have some speed going. I'm going to turn a light on for me simply because I need to see the edges a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to do a first pass and you hold this just like you would any tool and use your body to move it. And so, boy, there's a little bit of a tip there. This has a little play in it. So I always push down and bring it back and then it doesn't make any contact. So now I'm going to take this and right here, this is critical. I'm going to go one quarter turn just like that, lock this back down and then make a slow move again. There we go. And you can see it takes little shavings off. I'm pushing down, pulling it back. I'm going to come back here, see if I make contact. I might make contact here. Oops. There we go. So you can do the whole ball at once, or you can work from the center out and work your way over. It just depends on what you want to do. I think I'll do the whole swing each time. So one quarter turn. The reason I'm going with my cut in this direction is it doesn't chip the, the acrylic out like it does coming the other way. I'm not sure why, but it works. But anyway, this can be like watching paint dry. So we're going to speed things up a little bit <laughs> yeah, on the process. got the shape we want. <laughs> that looks good. Okay, I'm going to stop this a second. I've been stopping and checking as I go along, but yeah, that's smooth. And actually, it's kind of a little pockmarked finish on here, so I'm going to stick with that. I like that look. Uh, you might see a couple little black marks. That's from my experience of forgetting to take the alcohol and wipe off the outlines of the Sharpie. But anyway, the one thing I have to do here to finish this off is to move this around and I'm going to start nibbling away at the end here to take it off. So once I do that, we're going to be able to start working on the base and other directions on this thing to get it exactly where we want it. Get that where it should be the first thing. There we go. I'm going to advance that just a tick. Okay. Back at it. Right now, I'm playing with one of my favorite tools that I just discovered. <laughs> this is a tool made by Thompson, Doug Thompson. But Jimmy Clues, who is a phenomenal, he's the god of turning right now. He designed this tool. And look at that scraper profile. This is really, really cool. Um, it's enabling me to go in here very quickly knock wood out of the way and work my way into an edge. I mean, I can't do it this fast with my bowl gouge. I like that. I'm using the point. And I might not be using this the way he designed it, but at least it's working for me. And so I couldn't come in and make a straight edge right there and then bring it across like so. But, oh, <laughs> it didn't taste good anyway. What am I working on? <laughs> you want to know that part. This is the base that we're going to set the globe into. So I've taken the diameter here and transferred it to here so I'm going to just go in and and make that fit in there nice and snug. The thing you notice is there's a hole here. Well I took this as a blank and set it on the drill press just like this and drilled a hole in here because this is where our power cable is going to run and then it's going to pop out here and go into 
the bottom in here and that'll get our lights all electrified and up. All I did on this side, I just did this same thing. I made a recess in here and the jaws have expanded to hold that. So anyway, all this is is just a fit and try process like we've done on many projects. Now I'm just going to keep worrying that away until I get the spear, the ball, whatever, to fit in there just right. And it'll look good and then we're going to start painting the thing. Okay, you can see it fits really nice there. That's a little piece of bacote, uh, bacote, 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 whatever the wood is. I love the grain on it. We're going to put a Danish oil on that in a little bit to clean it up and make it look really nice. Uh, the thing I'm playing with right now is called Vitral uh, Self-Adhesive Lead Strip. You can actually use this to make stained glass with. Not real stained glass, but fake stained glass, which is what we're going to do. And if you look at this one here, I went with kind of like a spiral pattern. So it curves this way and then it curves down that way. And it's really cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, some of those candies that you used to get as a kid at Christmas time. So that's where I came up with that shape. So it's, it's really easy to do. You just gotta make sure you keep everything clean. And so I'm gonna take the lead and just kind of center it here. And I'm going to just kind of bend it and curve it as I go. Now the fun part about this is, the very first one is the easiest one to do. And I'm just gonna leave that on there for a handle. It's the second, third, and fourth one <laughs> that drives you crazy trying to get it to all match up. And the way this lead comes, it's two pieces side by side. And so you gotta peel one, and leave another one on there. What I did find out was make sure you wind up with, if you're using two colors, an even number of spaces around your piece, right? Uh, that way you wind up going green, red, green, red all the way around. I didn't wind up with an extra space. I had a green, green. Well, that wasn't any good. If I was doing three colors, I think that would have worked. Uh, there's some math in there. So the way to do this is really just come exactly opposite and then try to emulate that same shape onto this side. Now the next piece I'm gonna put on is gonna go from here to here, here to here. Now I'm even, here to here, here to here, here to here, and then I have my equal spacing. So I'm gonna keep putting this on, and then I'll show you how we put on the stained glass color. It's fun trying to shove 33 feet of copper inside a small hole like this, but you fold it up a few times and then you can get it to go in there. But I wanted to show you how this lights up before I color it because you might just like the effect of the uh, acrylic by itself which could work really cool so there we go here's our little doohickey here let's see oops I think I got a remote that'll work with this there we go so you can see you get the effect like that you can make it brighter if you want to that's kind of cool you could you know just even without the lead on there that would be really neat Kind of like a, uh, just a globe that would glow. A, a big night light. <laughs> but anyway, we'll turn that off for right... Oh, well, that's the on. Turn it off for right now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint it. Now, the cool thing about the paints... You see how that cable goes right out that hole there? Is that these are meant to be fake stained glass. They're not the regular paints you use. But they go on looking this funky color and then they dry clear. And you can see I'm still learning. The red went on really good. The green I'd want to make thicker. And I'll just start this up and show you a little bit of it because the instructions they give you is for flat glass. Whoops, pull that out of there. And what they say is they want you to fill this up all the way to the lead line to the depth of it. And that's hard to do on something round. So we'll get this started, but you literally take it in here and see how it looks pink, but it will turn red on us. And you just use the tip to float it in. They recommend you get a toothpick or something to knock the air bubbles out, but I found the tip does it just as well. And this is kind of like a plastic film once it dries. And so you don't have to worry about too many mistakes. You can peel off, start over again if you don't like it. But you put it on nice and thick like this, and you just keep working it back and forth until you cover the whole thing. So anyway, there's a little bit to go here, so let me get a little further into this and I'll show you what it looks like once you have all the color on. Okay, got her done, doing a little touch up, just making sure everything's smoothed out somewhat. It's gonna look lumpy, but it's gonna dry and it'll be really cool. And obviously right now it doesn't look anything like the finished piece does. But in the morning, it'll look just like this. So anyway, that is how you work with sheet acrylic to make a beautiful sphere that then you can put a hole in it and shove lights in there and put some colors on it to make a really cool holiday type of globe. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed that. And so the next time on wood turning, until the next time on wood turning, keep turning. <laughs> I'm breathing fumes, I think. Woo. <sighs>